What is going on everyone and welcome back to another episode for the ultimate beginner's guide. I'm Crazy Pickle and today I'm gonna talk about Elder Gods, which one you're gonna upgrade first, second, etc. So this is my personal opinion, this is I personally think would be the, not the best way, but you know, the good way to upgrade the certain aspects in a certain order. If you have a different, you know, approach to it, definitely leave them in the comments down below and it will definitely help out for the players who just become an Elder God. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so first of all, we're gonna go to the Hall of Elder Gods. If you don't know how to get there, go to your capital first and then open the tab Orbit. And then here is your Hall of Elder Gods. Click it on it and you have five different aspects. As I talked in a previous video, you know, how to become an Elder God, you're gonna have to max your Temple of Deeds. And when you do that, your aspect tenacity, rage, and mercy will be available for you. The aspect of magic and vengeance, you're gonna have to unlock it with having a trophy from getting it from the actual champ version of Avatar. This is the 10 man right here. So this is where you get the last two trophies to unlock the magic and vengeance. It depends on invasion, depends on the time you're watching this video, it doesn't have to be the Gorgonite, it could be Demon, Phytonites, etc, etc. Anyway, so we're going back, oh, look at that, glitched, uh, going back to the Hall of Elder Gods. The first aspect you're gonna focus on is the aspect of Mercy, and I'm pretty sure everybody would agree with me on that one. Now we're gonna talk about the reasons why. The main reasons is a few notes. It's the reduce of the cost of aspect form by 30%. And, the, well, it's not a few, a couple of nodes. And the actual gold node, which is the last one. Obviously, to get the last one, you have to unlock all the bronze and all the silver nodes in order to get the gold one. But how you actually get there more efficiently and which, which nodes in the bronze and the silver you're going to have to focus first. In the bronze one, you only need to unlock 12 levels. Let's call it that way. For the bronze, that way you can work on the silver nodes meaning that you can get four levels of this node that increase in two seconds longer for energy shower and blessing of the sun which is the light binder buff and the alchemist buff then four no four levels uh, when you apply shields from light binder and the alchemist become 60 percent more durable and the activating companions attack with pulsar reduce the cooldown of god's army by eight seconds the other three is all for the aspect, actual Elder God form, when you use certain abilities in, in Aspect of Mercy. But we need, for now, buffs for your character. That's why you're going for this one. So level four levels of this, four levels of this, and four levels of this, your total 12 levels. Then you can move to the Silver Bronzes, and the first one you're gonna be is reducing the cost of Aspect form by 30%. Meaning that I believe three levels, it's going to be 90%. Then it's going to be shield you apply become 30% more durable. And then increase the duration of aspect form by 60%. And it goes again, you can go three, three, and three. And after that, you can unlock any other node in bronze, whatever you want to go. You can go either focus one at a time, four levels here, four levels there, four levels there, move to the bronzes, four levels, go, go, go. And then well, three levels, three levels, and three levels. So when you max all of that, then you can go obviously for the last one, which is the gold node. The gold one allows you to receive addicts weekly. Addicts are powerful consumable items. You can have 10 items every week and the character can store up to 20 items in your bag. Definitely keep that in mind. Addicts can help you earn more cognition, reduce faith cost and create unique legendary equipment. But also this gold node increases the amount of cognition you gain by 20%. But every gold node for each aspect does that increase amount of cognition you gain by 20%. The more part we need is addicts. What is addicts? Addicts, it's the random addicts right here. You can get four different items randomly. Scroll of Enlightenment, Persistent Elixir, Rune of Time, Fluid in of Incarnation. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start with Rune of Time. It's this one right here, completely useless. We'll still get you will still get it. Just hold it in your back. I don't know. So, but more important, what we need is the scroll of enlightenment and pers persistence elixir. 
The Scroll of Enlightenment converts 1000 points of Divine Deeds into 500 points of Cognition. So that's going to be your small source of uh, converting Deeds to your Cognition. This one, Elixirs right here, consumed when you use your Aspect Form, restoring the Spent Faith. So let's say you need 500 Faith to go Elder God, right? From your Junior God to use the Elder God Form, you need 500 Faith. If you have the Elixir, it will give you those 500 Faith back but can but will consume one elixir so definitely gonna help so technically you go what well, not technically you actually go elder god form for free when you have the elixir in your bag and the last one is the fluid of Incarna incarnation which i don't have it but it looks the same as the helicer memory block that square red square like that you can only have seven in your bag then you have to use them and you will get randomly it's either a unity of aspect Hunger of Aspect, uh, Rivalry of Aspect, and Echo of Aspect. So this is four Aspect jewelry you can get from the Fluids. Uh, you need seven for each jewelry, but if you have all four jewelry already, you're not going to be able to get the Fluids uh, from the Random Addict. So you're only going to get Scroll of Enlightenment, Elixir, and Rune of Time, which sometimes definitely helps a lot because you eliminate one item from the Random Pool. So you're only going to have randomize of the three items you, you can get but would be nice if they would remove the rune of time from here then it would be way way better but it is what it is so if you have all four you're never gonna get fluids of incarnation you have to sell one aspect jewelry in order to fluid of, get fluid of incarnation back again anyway so that is what's what's the addict does and more the important items is scroll of enlightenment and elixir so that's those two items you more you need more of it all right so this is the first aspect they have to focus on first now we're moving to the next one this is where it becomes a little bit maybe not complicated <clears throat> but maybe some people may not agree with me but i do have two approaches what i was thinking about how the new player who just became an elder god can do upgrades for certain aspects you can go for the first approach you know, when you max your mercy, you can max your rage. Then you can, for example, go for the max your tenacity, then max your vengeance, then max your magic. So go one aspect at a time. I would say most players would definitely may agree with me. But the way the order goes for the aspect, how you actually max them in which order after the mercy, this is where it becomes a little bit, let's call it a complicated. If you do the raids already like distortions maybe sometimes people invite you for the avatar there's two ways which you can which you ask aspect actually which you can go max first and the second rage and the vengeance the reason why you go for the rage is because of the increases the damage of the god's might by 90 percent so if you do in the god during the raid distortions and avatar and you have to use the god's might I might actually work on a video, the proper rotation for the gods, maybe like during for the distortions and stuff. Different avatars might require a little bit different strategy, different rotation, depends. But the basics should be the same. This is why the buffs you go from the rage. It increases all damage by 12 uh, right here and increases the damage of God's Might by 90% as well. So that's definitely going to help. And of course, there is some buffs for classes, abilities and stuff like that. But there's pretty much, I would say, two more, two main abilities from the rage you possibly need. If you don't agree with me, leave in the comments down below what you think, what you have the opinion about that. But that's my opinion, you know, and I'm stick to it. Let's move on to the next one, which is tenacity. It also has the increases all damage by 12. But I know I said Rage and Vengeance. The, ra the Rage gold symbol is more of a PvP part, but just for the PN10 Wars. So don't, wo don't in hostile territories. Don't look at that at all. So pretty much if you want to uh, max the Rage, you max in just for the increases amount of cognition you gain by 20%. So that's the only reason you max the uh, Rage aspect. With Vengeance, you can switch. If you want, you can switch, you know, the way you want. You can, after the Mercy, you can go either Vengeance or raid and then rage 
it and it only goes that way if you do in the raids already if you do in the distortions and avatar but if you don't do that stuff yet then i would go mercy i would go rage i would probably go tenacity and then i'll go vengeance again it also depends on how you progressing or how often you play you know what's your play time how you progress and you progressing fast you progressing casually or you just have a limited time when you can play and stuff like that. All these little things are matters. When you maxed your mercy first, right? It's all those little, like I said, all the littles are matters. Little things are matters, you know, play, uh, play style and stuff like that. How you progress and all that. So, like I said, the first time, if you do in already distortions, then rage and vengeance. One of those you can focus first on it. If you max the vengeance, you will start getting the sparks, which might look like that, but different probably color for different invasion this one is particularly damage to fighter knights from the fighter knight invasion they have same for gorgonite demons uh reapers ocean knights etc this is when you max your um, vengeance that's what the gold node does uh, you also get some of the sparks that you can convert that particular stat to the different stat but that's probably going to be another video about it but that's the only if you're doing the distortions already and if you actually get in invited for the third distortions because only those sparks drops from the third distortions of every invasions so for now it's a heavy hydra executioner for fighter knights it's gonna be other third distortions and you, so you know what i'm saying so again i'm keep repeating myself if you're only doing distortion already mercy vengeance rage if you don't do distortions yet then go mercy first then rage and I'll go Tenacity. So that way you will get some bonuses even from Tenacity, increasing all damage by 12, a little bit of health. And if you max it, you can actually use two legendary accessories on your character instead of one. It also depends on your gear. So if you're kind of behind on your gear, so it might help a lot because you can get those aspect jewelry or drops from like stuff like that from training version of avatar it's completely random but at least you can equip two legendary pieces on your character maybe just because you're supporting maybe you're tanking etc stuff like that that's if you don't do distortions yet so if you didn't get invited maybe you're not strong enough you know you don't know the mechanics and stuff like that but i do have a bunch of videos and mechanics maybe not this maybe they not as best as people would expect but at least I will ex I'm explaining the mechanics of each distortion. So if you want it, go ahead. I have a playlist. Check it out. So if you don't do the distortions yet, Mercy, Rage, Tenacity, then goes Vengeance, and then Magic. This is the part if you go one aspect at a time. Max Mercy, Max Rage, Max Tenacity, Max Vengeance, Max Magic. Boom. All of the aspects are maxed. If you don't want to do the one at a time, I would still focus at least first three or first two max it first which would be let's say if you don't do distortions mercy rage max those two and then what you can do you can do the tenacity just for the nodes of health increasing health and all damage so again 12 bronze nodes here and then those two silver nodes then move to the for example magic get 12 levels of bronzes and then move to the damage of the com when combat starts which will increase it when it's maxed by 15 percent damage when combat starts is when you just start battle you have like 10 seconds when you have that increased damage and then vengeance you can again go for all damage and then maybe the bonus for your um, outlaw and archer or increasing the following stats by three so that's going to be probably the other way, you know, when you get all those additional bonuses for health, for your damage, for some, you know, defense stats and stuff like that, then you can focus. OK, I got all the bonuses I need what I wanted to. Now I can like, OK, let's max the tenacity, whatever. And then just boom, max the tenacity and then let's max uh, vengeance or magic, you know, and stuff like that. Then you can focus one at a time after you got all the bonuses a lot of people may not agree with me but again and the reason why may they may not agree with me it's because they focus in more of gaining as much cognition as possible and the reason why is because the farther you go or the farther you progress on your aspects you know the harder it gets for you to get one higher divinity point meaning 
when you're just starting out, for example, right? You're just starting out the upgrade in your Mercy. This is your first aspect. You maybe need only like, for example, 10,000 cognition in order to get one point to apply to whatever the symbol you want to apply, right? So let's say 10,000 cognition. It's like five times uh, or like 10 times doing directives if you have uh, cognition in your directives, for example, right? And keep in mind that you're not going to have 2,000 as I do because I have already three aspect maxed if you just starting out for you it's going to be like a thousand and something i believe 1125 so and and it, and again it's just an example if you for example just starting out your mercy you need to get one point you need for example 10,000 cognition right the farther you go on your progression for the each aspect the more cognition for each point you will need so you start in with 10,000 then you, let's say, max one aspect and it becomes 15,000 for each point and 20, 25,000. It's just an example. I don't need no exact number. Usually what we measure it is how many cognition bosses you have to kill in order to get one point. As an example, for the new players, of course, you may not be able to do the cognition bosses right from the start unless you would have a lot of a lot of faith stored before you became an elder god so maybe you can do it but if you don't then your only source gonna be directives and then when you max your um, mercy the addicts uh, right here so the addicts uh, but for now it's gonna be just the directives if you can do the cognition bosses for example then in order to get for in order for you to get one point you need to kill two times or it's, uh, let's say Two times you need to kill cognition bosses and you get one point. So that's how we're measuring right now how many times I have to kill bosses in order to get one point for my Elder God. Uh, some people need to kill like seven times in order to get one point, but because they already maxed Mercy, Rage, Tenacity, even Vengeance, and then now they're working on the last is Magic, for example. And so that's how we're measuring. Uh, but for you in the beginning, you need to kill two times to get one point. Then two times, two times, two times, two times. You get those points going, going, going. You're like, oh shit, let's go. I'm, I'm doing good. But then, boom, in Aspect of Rage, when you start focusing on it, you need to kill four times. It's like, oh, okay, so that makes sense. So that's how it works. We're measuring how many times you need to kill bosses in order to get one point. If you don't do the bosses, if you're just doing the directives, it's going to be a different story. I have no idea how many directives you need to do from the, when you just starting out in order to get one point but that's pretty much all for this video guys it's already 20 minutes video maybe a little bit less so i hope it wasn't too confusing again it's all counts comes down to all those little things that you do how you play what you focus on and i already said it so at this point i'm just gonna end on this video if you still have any questions specifically for the elder gods Leave them in the comment section down below. I will respond as soon as I can. And as always, if you like this video, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and activate notification that you're not going to miss new video I post. You can follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server. All the links you can find in the description. And until the next time, take care.